Hi, Dr. Eric Westman here with another episode of Learn with Dr. Westman. Today's episode is going to be how the blood sugar changes after having sugar. And remember this, the theme that I've been working on is, uh, and trying to get into uh, everyone's knowledge, is that a teaspoon of sugar is all that there is in the bloodstream of a normal person. So if you go to two teaspoons of sugar, you have diabetes. So it's not very different. It's a very controlled situation inside the bloodstream. The prediabetes and diabetes are both conditions of elevated blood glucose, elevated blood sugar. When you're checking your blood sugar, you're really checking glucose, but I use that interchangeably on purpose, sugar and glucose, to make sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but so there is a phenomenon called a biologic reality that some foods get absorbed faster than others and, and more totally than others. And then there's individual variation. You may absorb a different amount than I do. And, or you may absorb faster or slower, especially if you have other conditions that cause slowed gastric emptying you may actually get slowing of absorption of food. Uh, but in general, the more refined the sugar is, you know, like taking a teaspoon of sugar, the faster it will be absorbed. Uh, and you might see a, depending on your, your uh, genetics, if you have insulin resistance or not, um, you might actually not see any change in the blood sugar after having some sugar. So this gets confusing, doesn't it? So if you're delta right or the healthier or the ability to control the sugar genetics, you know, your insulin goes up really fast. And so you might not see much of a blip after consuming a meal of carbohydrates. As my patients say to me, it's not fair <laughs> because uh, what's it, the saying is I look at food and I look at carbs and it makes my blood sugar go up. Well, that's not true. But uh, what you want to do is um, reduce, in the big picture, the total carbs is the uh, simplification of looking at, you know, starches have sugar, they get digested to, starches get digested to sugar, sugar gets absorbed, so total carbs gives you a combined metric of all of the sugars and fibers that are, that are in the food. And you can fine tune every food. There are charts and charts and charts to give you an estimate of how much it might raise your blood sugar. But again, these are estimates and a lot of these foods have not been tested in people with diabetes. Um, so the amount that the blood sugar goes up can be quite variable. Um, I remember when I was in training, it was taught, this is you know, decades ago, it was taught that, that blood sugar rise after a meal was normal because you were eating carbohydrates. You would have a rise in the blood sugar. Now there's a focus, and you can see this written in the, the literature, that the postprandial, meaning after the meal, post meaning after, prandial meaning meal, the postprandial elevation in blood sugar is thought to be bad. You don't want to have too high an elevation. So we've gone from, oh, it's normal to have a blood sugar elevation after a meal over the last you know, decades ago, to actually you don't want to have too high an elevation after a meal. And so the elevation of the blood sugar is a, a function of, it, it depends upon the amount of carbohydrates in the meal. Now, protein does raise the blood glucose a little bit and the insulin a little bit, but not to the degree that carbohydrate does. And actually, you can add proteins and fats to carbohydrates to slow and even reduce the uptake of the sugar to manipulate it if you're eating a meal with lots of different foods, different macronutrients, the carbs, proteins, and fats. But um, it's pretty clear now that for most people, the carbohydrate-free eating, so if you don't eat any carbs, your blood glucose will be almost flat. Uh, and after meals, you don't get this elevation. Um, that's why with people with diabetes, if they're on short-acting medicine, I, I stop that immediately because they're not covering the carbs in the meal anymore. 
Uh, and remember, if, you're, if you have diabetes, you're on medicine, medicines, be sure to do medicine changing and reducing and a diet that's potent with a doctor or health care practitioner who understands how potent this can be. Uh, so the, the extent to which the blood sugars go up will depend on how many carbs are in the meal and then on your genetics. Um, and all too often I see that doctors really don't ask you what you're eating, do they? I mean, when's the last time you went to a doctor and, and they said, um, please write out what you're eating and drinking for me, you know, over the course of the day, and I'll look at it. Well, I do that every time people come to my office because my secret weapon as an internal medicine and obesity doctor is food. So, you know, but you can, you can go to a doctor, they never ask you about what you're eating and drinking, uh, although you might start asking, well, is there something I can do with my food or my lifestyle that might help or help me get off medications? Um, but doctors might not ask you about food, but they're quick to diagnose conditions and then give you pills for them, right? So that's one way to go about things. In fact, that's the most, you know, traveled pathway, as it were, that, that most doctors just give medications. And I'm, a, I'm afraid that that doctors coming out of Duke today uh, are, they're surprised to see a clinic like mine where people actually get off medication because in the other clinics they go to, internal medicine, family medicine, the other doctors are prescribing pills all the time. And we, there's a, a uh, tragedy that most doctors are not taught nutrition. Most doctors are not taught how to help people lose weight or reverse diabetes. But um, the uh, ability to do that is, is real and available now uh, by people who understand how to do that. Um, but uh, it's that blood sugar and insulin rise that you want to protect against. Uh, you don't want to have a blood sugar that, uh, that's elevated all day long. Uh, so the sugar in the food, refined sugar, refined starches being the most potent promoter of blood sugar elevation. Um, and uh, now you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, I'll do a video very shortly on how to measure your own blood sugars. Now, I don't recommend that. I, I, I just want you to, to believe, you know, trust me. <laughs> well, it, it's solid science that, uh, that basically it's the carbs that raise the blood glucose. If you want, but you, if you want to prove that in your own body, we'll talk about how you can actually check your blood sugar at home and see what foods raise your blood sugar. Um, and there are lots of different ways to do that today. Not that I recommend it. I just want you to think very carefully about the sugars, moderate them, and the starches get digested to sugar. I hope that's helpful. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Check out our classes on sugar and food addiction at the Adapt Your Life Academy and other classes as well. Please see the description below for a link to my latest free guide. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.